So how you, how you doing? I know it's been crazy for you the last like month or so. Like how you been doing? Bro, it's been wild. What an adventure, bro. I wake up every day. DMs are flooded. I got like my merch line ready to drop. I got, you know, interviews and and you got paparazzi following me around LA. Been kicking it with the boys, uh, introducing me to, like all the right people, all these big time A-list celebrities. It's been a dream, bro. Unreal. Has, has anybody given you any advice like to how to deal with all this? I know it's like it just like came comes out of nowhere. Like, did anybody give you any advice? Oh, yeah. No, like Harry Jowsey from season one is kind of like taking me under his wing, showed me all the ropes. Uh, we're on the same management team. So like between him and my management, they kind of tell me, you know, stay level headed, stay, like keep your head in the game. You know, as a football player, they use sports references towards me all the time. Like, I don't know why, <laughs> but, uh, you know, keeping your head in the game, staying focused, staying locked in and, uh, you know, trying not to, to focus on like the BS comments, like try to just stay like focused on the positive stuff and, and obviously like don't blow your money and stuff like that. And I don't know, like it's, it's been crazy, bro. Like I just um, posted on my story. I just paid my mom's bills off. So sent her all the money for that. It's like one of the proudest moments of my life. So that's amazing. So I know, I, I know you're from Washington and I, I'm from Washington too. So I was like, Oh, I love when people from Washington are on and stuff like that. So like, I, like, how is that feeling? Like, did you even get like any um, people from back home hitting you up and everything? Like, how is that like? Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, once you become like this sort of, I guess, celebrity, you start hearing from people you've never heard of, or like <laughs> people you haven't people you haven't talked to in years, or like they'll just like say like stories that you don't even remember. But like, you know, here's the thing about all that though: it's like I always kept my circle pretty small anyway, so like, I always knew who like was there for me and who like wasn't. But my thing about it is like I'm big on karma. <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a firm believer. Like, you got to be nice to everybody, treat everybody with respect. So. Um, obviously, of course, you know, being a Washington kid, you got kids from my high school hitting me up. Um, I went to university out there, got people from my university hitting me up. Uh, you know, like people that were like nice to me, but like, you know, some people that always weren't so nice to me. But, you know, at the end of the day, bro, it's like treat everybody the same. Be nice to everybody because, you know, like I think I think like it comes to an understanding when you reach a certain level of success that. Like they know what you did and you know what you did and like they know what they've treated you like and you know, exact like vice versa. So it's like it's like a mutual respect thing to know like, okay, like that's not how this is gonna go anymore. So it's like a little bit of a head nod, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you plan on going back to like visit anytime soon? Yeah, I was actually looking at flights today. I'm, I you know, I might get up there, come check it out. Uh, you know, it's summertime up in Washington, so uh, it's kinda like where I like to be. So no, that's amazing. you plan on throwing any parties or anything or like like a um not a party but like a um what are those things called like a a, a kickback pop, like a pop, yeah like a not like a give back like a pop up you know what I'm saying like one of those I know a fashion they call like a pop up shop but like what is I forgot what it's oh yeah 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 uh I don't know if I'm gonna be hosting any pop ups up there. I might just uh, you know show face, like say it was good to people, go to like some of the spots. See, I'm like the type of person I like to go back to like the small places I hung out before, like I blew up and did all these things. Like I think that's like way cooler because it's like you don't usually have like a list celebrities coming into like this bar, this bar, this bar. It's like I have never had that, so I'm not gonna change my ways. Like I had fun here before all that, so I'm gonna have more fun here now that you know it is what it is, you know. Are you still um, pursuing football? Absolutely. I uh, I just came off the spring league. I had a I had a baller out here somewhere, but uh, I just came off the spring league. Uh, played for the number one defense in the league. I was a captain and started for them. And you know we won the championship. And uh, you know uh, just my agents in the works with talking to various CFL NFL teams right now. But uh, next year with the USFL launching that's kind of like the focal point of like where I'm going to be going um, probably next year because the same coaches that I've had in the spring league are now all going to get hired into that league. So it's just like going right back to it, except, you know, this time we're going to make, you know, a, a good chunk of change. So. Yeah. No, if there's like a team in NFL, you would like to play for, what team would it be? Oh, so if there's a team in the NFL, I like to play for either the Seahawks, the Rams, the Giants or the Dolphins, okay. like one of the four corners for sure. You would you would like to team up Aaron Donald in the in Los Angeles? Oh yeah, I think 
playing with Aaron Donald. See, the thing about football, too, is, like, you kind of become, like, a, a product of the people that you play with. So, the, you know, the better the talent around you, the better the player you're going to be. So, yeah, I'm definitely all, all for going to play with Aaron Donald. So. Who are, like, some of the defensive players, like, you model your game after? I know you play defensive end. So, like, who are, like, some of the defensive players you, like, looked up? Oh, man, in the pass rush aspect, I'd like to model myself after guys like Cameron Wake, guys like Vaughn Miller, uh, you know, th- those type of the guys that I look for in, like, the pass rush game. Obviously, when I, you know, when I'm shifting down there, I got my hand in the dirt, I'm playing in the trenches. I look at guys, you know, like Aaron Rodgers, Fletcher Cox, like, got, like dogs like that, you know, those – those are the style of game that I would like to, you know, see myself play. But the problem is, is like, uh, I'm a D lineman, yeah, and I, and I do well at the D line, but I have more of like a, a corner attitude. Like I'm always running my mouth. Uh, I actually got punched in the face. That's how I got this little scar right here. But I'm always like running my mouth and and, and talking all that noise. But I figure like you know, as long as you can back it up, you can talk about whatever you want to talk I about. I feel like yeah, I feel like as a defensive lineman, you can talk your shit because like. You're, they're not going to talk back because do you pro- if they provoke y'all, it's like game over. Like it's yeah, oh, yeah. And everything. Like, y'all, can the, y'all can literally wreck the y'all can ruin the whole game. So it's like you can talk all your shit you want as long as you back it up. You're good to you. yeah. Corner is like okay, you can get burnt. Uh, the, the, you can defense line. Oh, yeah. Kind of don't want to piss me rent up. free. I'm in here rent free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living. I got my feet kicked up, shoes on, and everything on your table rent free. <laughs> Oh, who do you who do you have winning the Super Bowl this year? Oh, the Seattle Seahawks all the way. Let's go. <laughs> you think they should have picked up Julio Jones? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I, you know, I would say yes, but like also the receiving core in Seattle is tough. You got Doug or you got Tyler Lockett and freaking uh, DK Metcalf. Like that is you put Julio Jones on that team, you might as well make a bad ultimate team. Like it, like it wouldn't even be fair. Like I don't even know who you do. like. First of all, corners are hard to come by. Okay, like let alone a team has probably like two solid corners. That's rare. Now, if you got three solid receivers and a good running back and Russell Wilson, like it just it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a fair combo. You know? I know, but I would mean it would open up the game so much for every like you can't do you can't double on anybody. You can't double anybody. It would open yeah. up the game. It would. It definitely would open up the game. But at the same time, too, is like the running back. You know, Chris Carson coming back. Uh, you got freaking um, Rashad uh, coming back. Like it's, <laughs> I feel like adding Julio, it would have been nice, yes. But like I feel like the team that we have right now currently is going to be a tough team to beat as it is. Obviously, the speed of DK Metcalf. We got him running in the Olympics. Well, competing to run in the Olympics. Yeah, no, that was at crazy. <laughs> at six fucking seven, 240 pounds. And like 10 3. I was, I was shocked. I was like, <laughs> like, I don't like, I ran a 10 3 and like never, but like, I that was like what I was aiming for in high school at the peak of my speed. And this man but just yeah. went out there and, and ran it. Basically I don't think he trained team. like that for it. I'm like, oh, imagine if you would train, he probably goes 10, probably under 10, honestly. If he actually trains for that. <laughs> so my man, my man, did, my man, my man did a couple up downs, a couple stretches, and went and ran a ten three like he was he was bred for that. Like that's unreal. All right, so I want to get into too hot to handle. <laughs> I know you were talking about how it's like crazy since it's been there, but like, what's like one like positive experience you gained from like being on the show? Uh, positive experiences like I use like a lot of the workshops um, on how to talk to like people in relationships and like I know it's like it, it's kind of funny at first because you think like you go and you learn how to like love somebody but honestly like I've used a lot of these workshops in my favor to flirt with girls like one of the workshop teaches you how to like speak and how to look at them and when to look at them and what to say and what to look for and I use that all the time and it never fails like it never fails and so like the positives coming off of that I would say I got friendships for life within the cast and then like this superpower to talk to any, any girl in the world. So, <laughs> Is it true that um, you were um, upset at first because you weren't supposed to, you were doing a, you were um, supposed to do a different reality show, but you found out it was too hot to handle. Yeah. We were supposed to be on this show called parties in paradise. And so I'm sitting here doing all this work, busting my tail thinking I'm going to get to go fuck all these girls and party and do all this shit. And then, you know, they get us some drinks, they get us some costumes. We've got all these girls. I'm about to go. I'm like, man, I might go for the trifecta tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, clear the clear the everything out of my body. And um, 
Then Mana popped out, and I was like, bro, you got to be kidding me. Like, there's no way. That was, like, the last thing I ever expected. Like, I was – I've never even seen the show. Um, other than, like, I saw, you know, the previews of it on Netflix. I'm like, yeah, who would ever sign up for that bullshit? <laughs> So how does that even work? Like, I thought, is that even like illegal or is that, how does that ever work? Man, you sign up to go on a TV show. They can do whatever they want. Oh, I thought it was, okay. I thought if you sign up for like um, the Paradise show, I thought it would just be strictly for Paradise. It's just, just for all. No, TV so they, actually, they actually had a fake contract that said Parties in Paradise that we signed and all that. And then after we found out we were going to Atlanta, they gave us an option to like, leave. obviously we could leave and go home. Or we had to sign another contract saying we're on to our handle. But obviously, it's like, I'm already here. I already quarantined. I'm already on the show. Like, just where's the dotted line? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know just, like, what is it? Um, what is it what was I about to say? How is it, like, filming? Like, is it, like, filming 24-7? Or do you guys get downtime? Or, like, how is that, like? like what, are, what are people don't see from, like, viewers, like, on the show? Uh, it is filming 24 seven. The only time that we didn't have cameras on us was in the lunchroom when we were eating. And, uh, we had like one kind of off day, but it wasn't really an off day. It was more of like, we were doing like pickups from other days, like where they need us to like put on a costume or put on an outfit for one of the other days. And we'd have to like go rehab a conversation. Like it never happened before. It was like the weirdest thing. Like we'd have to like essentially like delete some days, like, okay, that day never happened. So like go back and start from here and, uh, like obviously there's like a lot of stuff that, that plays into uh, how reality tv is filmed it's not scripted but at the same time it's not always 100 percent like how the viewers see it if that makes sense yeah so um you had like a little thing with carly during the show do you kind of like do you regret like how you handled that situation a little bit or do you kind of like just you just want to learn from it later on absolutely not i don't regret that decision at all i feel like the way like the the scene was like portrayed was like me just like leaving her cold hearted but honestly it was like a long time coming like her and i were not having like a good time together um i wasn't happy um i couldn't make her happy because like the person that she wanted me to be and the person like i was was not gonna collide and i think like on the show you see it as like an all of a sudden thing where i'm leaving but in like reality like that was like you know a, a bomb waiting to go off essentially and, and it just got to the point where i was like okay like now i'm not going to do this anymore you know what i mean yeah i know you guys had that one scene um with the um expert where you guys were um telling each other like how you guys felt about each other does that like did that like looking at that like or during that um exercise you guys were doing like did that make you like think like future like oh this is how i'm going to handle certain things or i'm not afraid to like come out and say how I feel about certain situations or stuff like that. Are you talking about like the scene where like she had like the gag in my mouth? Uh, yeah. And then you guys had like touch each other's chest and shit like that. I don't know. That's oh, what yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that scene was definitely intense. The beginning of that scene, it didn't really show what we were doing, like a breathing exercise where we like opened up our fight or flight systems and got really um, in tune with like our inner self. So we are very emotionally open at that point. And um, when I was sitting there, I remember looking at Carly and I was like, you know, just be honest, be open about what you have to talk about. Because, like, I was trying to get her to you know, speak up for herself and and she needed to, like, have, like, a voice. And, like, I feel like uh, at that moment she just, like, went for it. But, like, in the sense of she wasn't really talking to me directly. She was, like, kind of, like, just talking. I was just the catalyst representing every boy that's ever heard her. So it's, like, I was kind of just sitting there just just dealing with, like, all of the bullshit that she was put through um prior to that and that's why when it was like my turn to go um you know like I could have you know bit back um attack you know something like that but it's like I'm bigger than that um I'm better than that and uh you know it's I have no ill will towards her so I uh, you know chose to like you know speak up and say like hey, I think you're a great person I think you're beautiful and all this and that but there's a lot of things that prevent you from being your full self and I think a number one thing of that is the insecurity that you have within your own beauty and like obviously you saw how the rest of that workshop went so yeah are you and Tabitha so cool? Because the way she came off in the show was like a savage. So I was like, I want to know if you guys are so cool at all or is this like you guys just completely just shut off after the show? How is that like? Yeah, me and Tabitha, we have a great relationship still to this day. Um, you know, I talk to Tabs all the time. I mean, obviously the way she was portrayed in the show uh, is as a savage. 
But uh, like I said, like it was not everything you see is like how things go. Um, so Tabitha and I, we have like a great friendship, a great relationship. And, uh, you know, we talk WhatsApp all the time. She just lives in the UK. So it's like, you know, it's like a, a 10 hour difference between her and I. So it's like, I'm getting up, getting ready for my day and she's going to sleep. But sometimes like, you know, she'll call me at like four o'clock in the morning or like, I'll call her at four o'clock in the morning. We'll talk on FaceTime for a little bit and we'll, you know, go to bed, you know, it's just, you know, and then especially when we first came off the show, we had a really great relationship. Like I sent her like some flowers and stuff for Christmas, wrote her like a nice little love letter. Like it was all, it was all okay, great. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, what's something that you learned from like what's something you learn about women while being on the show that you didn't know prior to going on the show? Uh, yeah, women are, are extremely <laughs> messy. Oh my god. <laughs> like I thought boys were bad. These women did not clean up after themselves. I'm like, bro, you guys raised in a barn. Get it together. Get it, get it together. Oh, uh, looking back on the show, is there something, is there like somebody you wish you kind of pursued in, um uh, during the show that you didn't like yeah you I wish I would, uh, you know like uh if I could go back and do it again like obviously like a lot of people like a lot of people don't know this but me and Kayla had like a pretty good relationship on the show like I talked to Kayla probably the most out of every girl here and if I could go back like I would have definitely tried for Kayla more uh Kayla and, and Carly didn't really get along just because like um they're both I guess had love interests for me um but obviously I was with Carly, so I never pursued anything with Kayla. But if I had known, like, me and Carly were not going to work out, I probably would go back and, you know, see what's up with Kayla, too. So, so like, what's next for you? Like, what's something that you really want to do, like, just? Yeah, next for me is, like, uh, I got this whole vision board up here. Of, like, oh, no. All my goals and stuff to accomplish this year. Um, next for me is, like, I'm obviously, you know, I'm going to work on my edits all day today, YouTube videos, TikToks for the week, and, uh get those route ready to post. I'm building like my own social media influencing squad uh, team to work with me and my med spa. Uh, I got, you know, vacations planned. I got, you know, more interviews, podcasts set up. And like, obviously I got the football season uh, right around the corner. So uh, hopefully getting into an NFL camp and then pursuing that little ordeal. So lots of, lots of bright um, and interesting things to come. Nice. Well, thank you, Chase, for talking to me. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope the best for you. I hope you keep killing it, man. So, yeah. Yeah, no problem, man. Where is the buzz? You said it was mine. Where is the buzz? <laughs>